I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. This is episode 210, Tolerating Disapproval. So welcome back, my friends, to another episode of the Brilliant Balance podcast. I want you to think today, as we kind of get started, about a time where you were really struggling to make a decision, you know, where you were tangled up in knots because you just didn't know if this was going to work. You know, you, you knew you had to make the decision, you knew you had to make a call, But you were telling yourself, I can't do this. I can't make this particular decision. Or maybe you could make the decision, but you couldn't bring yourself to communicate that decision. And maybe you're telling yourself, I can't do it, or it won't work, or I'm not allowed to do this. And I want you to think back on that time and ask yourself if what you really meant was, I can't do it and be sure that I have everyone's approval. Because that pattern of wanting everyone's approval is one I see a lot, and it really can become a trap. Because there are a lot of things in life that we want or we know are right for us or right for people that we love, but we're so worried about whether the proverbial everyone will approve that we're paralyzed in indecision. We can't move forward. I I know a lot of women, you probably do too, who identify with that term people pleaser. You know, they kind of wear it as a badge of honor, like, well, you know, I'm just a people pleaser. But it really can go too far, and it can cause a lot of distress for the person who's trying to keep everyone else happy. So what I want to do today is take a look at some signs that you might care too much about what other people think. And I want to give you some questions that you can ask yourself as you're learning to tolerate disapproval in some instances of your life. Because here's the cool thing. Life gets a whole lot better when you learn how to make the decisions that are right for you or right for sort of the immediate circle of people who are affected without worrying about what the crowd says, you know, without worrying about having to get that stamp of approval from every blessed person you've ever met in your life. And I think this is something that public figures have to learn. People who are really in positions of high visibility, you can think about, I always think about people who run for president for some reason, like the the level of disapproval that they have to tolerate is always darn near 50%. And just willing, being willing to throw your hat in that ring and know that at least half of the people evaluating your every word are going to disapprove of it or disagree with you is huge. Presidents have approval ratings published. Like, would you like to have your approval rating published? That seems really scary, right? When we think about a public accounting for how many people approve of or disapprove of the choices that we're making, the decisions that we're making. And yet it does come with the territory. It comes with the territory when we step into positions of visibility. So whether you are a leader in your company, whether you are a parent, whether you are a leader in your community, taking some sort of you know position that has decision-making authority, it bears the burden of potential disapproval. And so I think it's really important that we get grounded in is this a driver for our decision making? You know, I think it's important that other people's approval is not the singular driver of our decisions. And there's probably a certain circle of people where it is warranted to take into consideration how they feel about these decisions. But then there's a wider circle where truly they don't get a vote. You know, they just don't have a vote in our decision making process because this isn't an election right? We are not dealing with democratic choices in cases of our family or cases of our companies or cases of our communities. So let's start by talking a little bit about some signs that might illustrate that you care too much. And I have four of these I want to cover. 
signs that you might be putting too much weight on other people's approval and that that may be affecting your behavior in ways you don't even necessarily realize. So the first sign is if you are using perfectionism to avoid criticism. If you're using perfectionism to avoid criticism. This is where being good enough is never good enough. It, you know, you don't know how to find that edge of, you know what? This is good enough. I've gathered enough data, I've looked at enough options, I've shaped the communication of this decision sufficiently, but if being good enough is never good enough and you never relax. You know, you never are able to be like, whew, I've done enough on this. I'm going to take a breather now. And you're very hard on yourself. And then candidly, you know you're also hard on others. Because you're hard on yourself, you hold everyone else to that standard. That is the first sign that you may care too much about what other people think. Think about what's at the root of that. What's really at the root of that is I am going to outwork the criticism. You know, I'm not going to leave any room for someone to say she hasn't tried hard enough or done enough to get this to a place where it meets with my stamp of approval. So perfectionism can become that hiding place where we are just going to keep polishing the rock in in an effort to avoid criticism because criticism is so hard to bear. Okay, so that's that's the first sign that you can be on the lookout for that might say you care too much. The second sign is if you find yourself avoiding anything that feels risky or controversial. You know, you're sort of like vanilla oatmeal. <laughs> you you won't express opinions, you won't try new things. You sort of stay in your little box, stay in your comfort zone. You continue doing things you've already done because they weren't met with disapproval. And so you feel like, okay, I'm in, I'm in a safe zone and I need to avoid anything outside of this that feels risky or unique or, you know, off the beaten path or controversial. This is especially true if you grew up equating failure with parental disapproval. Right. If you grew up in a household where failure meant disapproval, then failure starts to take on really high levels of significance as you move into adulthood. So if you find yourself avoiding anything but the tried and true expected path, you know, I'm calling this vanilla oatmeal, then that is a sign that you may be worrying so much about other people's opinions or their approval that you're not willing to really chart your own course. And that can make life feel kind of small and kind of boring. You know, it's really easy to sort of curl up in a ball of comfort and not give yourself those opportunities to try new things. So that's the second sign. What's the third sign? The third sign that you might care too much is if you find that you use anger to preempt criticism. You know, this is kind of that classic pattern of keeping people at a distance. You're in this one, you're sort of the prickly porcupine, you know, like it's stay away from me because you might get hurt. So in order to chart your own course, picture that prickly porcupine, right? He's kind of trotting along, charting his own course, but he knows if anybody dares get close to him, they're going to get pricked. So if you're using anger, like porcupine spines, to say, go ahead, I challenge you to question me. And if you do, you're going to get a torrent of anger headed in your direction, right? That is actually a sign that you care so much about other people's approval that you're like overcompensating. So this this pattern, you can appear to be fiercely independent, or you can show up in the world as like, here is this confident porcupine, but you're really terrified. You know, so terrified that someone's going to question you, that you will you will combat that preemptively with anger. And so I would say pay attention to the feedback you get from people who are in close to you. If they would describe you as someone who has a short fuse or a hot temper or, you know, you get defensive easily – those are signs, they're, they're mechanisms to protect you from the sting of disapproval, okay? And that's one that maybe is a little, it's a little less obvious that that might be what's going on underneath. 
The fourth sign that you might care too much about what other people think is when you bury your own needs to the point where you're not even sure what they are anymore, you know, where you have completely lost touch with your own needs and you're like a chameleon, right? You're working so hard to get approval that you sort of blend in with whatever crowd you're in at the time. So, you know, you at at a low level, you want pizza for dinner. Your family is all interested in ordering Thai food. And you're like, oh, Thai food's great. Let's get Thai. But really, you've been craving pizza all week, right? So you don't even know anymore that that's a dominant need. You just know that making your family happy by doing what they want is going to make you more comfortable. And that starts to feel a lot like happiness. Right? It's like this little train that says, my actual true happiness I've lost touch with. So I derive secondary happiness by everyone else being happy because that's comfortable and I've now equated comfort with happiness or with joy. So if you find yourself regularly, like whether it's at work, you know, you're not speaking up for your own needs or point of view, whether it's at home if you find yourself regularly burying your own needs or not voicing your own opinions to the point where you you honestly aren't even sure you have an opinion anymore, then that is a sign that other people's approval and happiness is getting disproportionate weight in your life, okay? Do you ever find yourself saying, I just need a minute to breathe? While the whole idea of meditation can sound totally intimidating, I've found that stepping away from the chaos of life, even just for a few minutes, is incredibly restorative. So if you're short on time, but could use a few moments of peace right about now, listen to my five-minute meditation for working moms. It'll help you clear your head and come back to your day feeling centered and refreshed. Head over to brilliant-balance.com forward slash breathe. Press play and settle in for a few mini moments of peace right now. So if you look at all of those signs, you know, perfectionism that you might be using, the avoidance of anything risky or controversial, anger to preempt criticism, or really this subjugation of your own needs. If any of those patterns are at play, I think it's a good sign that you are really tied, tethered to other people's approval. And you may want to learn to break that pattern. You may want to learn to get some freedom from those patterns so that you actually can be a bigger force in the world. You can do things that are more creative. You can do things that are more independent, can make a bigger dent in the universe. And importantly, you also can experience the joy and fulfillment that comes with that. Like you can take your turn in the circle of people getting their needs met. So I thought about what are some questions that you might want to ask yourself to start to get some freedom from this disapproval addiction or approval addiction. And I'm going to share them with you. And I really would love to hear what you think of these. So the first question is, who disapproves? When I say, I can't do this because someone won't be happy, have you really gotten clear about whose disapproval you're worried about? You know, is it the proverbial everyone? Like, no one will like this, no one will like me if I do this? Or is it really one person or maybe a couple of people? I've thought about this in my own life over the years when I felt nervous about putting something out into the world. Like I remember vividly when I was starting the blog years ago and thinking about sending out some blog posts. And there were a couple of people's faces that just routinely surfaced in my mind's eye where I was very concerned about their approval or disapproval. It was not everyone. You know, I really didn't, I didn't think I was that important. It was a few people that I thought, oh, what are they going to think when they see this or read this? So, you know, you may have kind of a regular cast of characters that show up in your head as like your, your disapproval committee. And that's something you want to pay attention to. You know, also, is the person or group of people that you're worried about, are they people who are very close to you, where their opinions truly do matter? Or are they someone in the crowd? 
you know, sort of the cheap seats who are willing to criticize anything that you do or anything that doesn't look like them. And then the third thing to think about in terms of who disapproves is, could it be that you are secretly the one who disapproves and you're sort of projecting that opinion onto someone else, right? Sometimes our own fear of failure, we project onto someone else and we say, well, they're never going to like this. They're never going to let me do it. But it's our own fear that we're grappling with. So that's different, right? When you're the one who has the fear, that we certainly want to pay attention to and dance with that. And I want you to ask yourself, am I somehow projecting my own fear onto someone close to me and saying, I know you're not going to like this. I know you disapprove of this decision, but actually it's you who's grappling with your own uncertainty. Okay. So that's the first kind of collection of questions is around who disapproves. Second set of questions is how do you know? How do you know they disapprove or that they will? Have they actually said that to you? Is it direct feedback? Have the words come out of their mouth with no translation required, right? There's no innuendo here. Have they directly said, I think you're making a bad decision, or I don't like what you're doing or how you're handling this? Or is it something more subtle like body language? You know, do they raise an eyebrow? Were they quiet when you told them something? Was it a nonverbal? Are you reading between the lines that they disapprove because you're so worried about it? And I'll tell you, I taught a training recently at an event, and one of the points in the training was about confirmation bias. And confirmation bias basically says we go out into the world and we see what we think we're going to see. So imagine you're already worried about something you're doing or a decision you're making, and now you have a conversation about it with someone and they raise an eyebrow confirmation bias would say, oh, see, I knew it. I knew they weren't going to like this. I knew they were going to be mad at me. When in fact, you're sort of reading the tea leaves through the lens of what your worst fear was. Okay. So ask yourself that second question. Once you figure out who disapproves, how do I know? What am I interpreting as disapproval? Now let's assume they really do disapprove. And you get to a place where you're pretty clear, like it's somebody who you care about and it's real, okay? Third question is, do they have the whole story, right? If they have the same context that you do about the history, all the pros and cons, all of the situation, would they then see things differently? You know, do they, in other words, have different information or a lack of information, are they interpreting it differently? Do they have different a different lens on the situation? Because disapproval without context really can't carry much weight. I will tell you, if you have ever been covered in the media for anything, like even if it was something really simple in your small town as a kid, I think this is where you learn how often the details are not accurate in the media. You know, they'll like maybe you found puppy when you were you know, 10 years old in your town. And they were like, look, little Jane found this puppy and here's her picture. But actually they misname the puppy or they misspell your name or they get the date wrong, right? The details are often incorrect through someone else's lens. So it's the same way with disapproval. If they don't have all the details and they don't really have the context for the decision you're making, then they might disapprove. So think about a work context where senior leaders are trying to make a important decision about a project, whether it's going to be funded or not funded, or they're making an organizational change, or they're changing something like a benefits plan. And think about when that gets deployed to the organization, how many people disapprove, right? A bunch. In any scenario we could imagine, like one of those, some subset of the employee base is going to disapprove, right? There's going to be chatter in the hallways. There's going to be text messages exchanged, eyes rolled. People will be angry. They will completely disapprove or disagree with the decision. But rarely do all of the employees have the same information as the people making those decisions. And so with the full context of all of the information, might the approval be different? You know, might the reaction or the response be different? And it is the same thing with us. No one can ever fully see 
things from our perspective because they're not living inside of our body and our mind and having our experience. So that experience is so unique that it's not even fair for us to expect that someone else would have the whole story. But that is a framing question. It can shift your perspective when you say, okay, they might be upset about this, but do they have the whole story? Maybe they'll never have the whole story, right? But that is important context on their reaction. And then the fourth question to ask yourself is, what will matter more in the future? Me making this decision or me having their approval, right? In other words, is it worth risking the decision, the action, whatever it is, in order to get their approval? Or am I actually making everything worse just so that I can have that precious approval that I'm so addicted to? So that fourth question, what will matter more in the future? This decision? or their approval can really be kind of the final frontier before you give yourself permission to move forward. I want to recap a couple things from today because I've covered like a lot here. So we talked in this episode all about your likelihood of caring too much, right? Are you able to tolerate disapproval in order to have freedom? And we covered four signs that you might care too much. Patterns of behavior, right? Perfectionism, avoidance of anything that seems risky or controversial, using anger to preempt criticism like the prickly porcupine, or burying in your own needs to the point where you don't even know what they are. All you care about is keeping everyone else happy. If those patterns are at play in your life, I really want you to see if you can get some degrees of freedom and start to learn to operate without full approval. And those four questions, again, are who disapproves, right? Who am I picturing as disapproving of this? Two, how do I know that they really disapprove? What am I interpreting as disapproval? Third, do they have the whole story? Do they have the context? If they knew what I knew, would they still disapprove? And four, what will matter more in the future, this decision or their approval? I hope that gives you some degrees of freedom as you move through your own life. Thank you so much for listening today. Listen, if you want to keep up with all the latest happenings at Brilliant Balance, make sure you subscribe to the weekly. Go to brilliant-balance.com forward slash weekly to subscribe. That is all for today, my friends. Till next time, let's be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com.